few months ago, I went to Atlanta to visit a friend. And while I was there, I met a guy. And the interesting thing about this guy is that he works with my friend. And I've known my friend for 17 years. So this is someone that I trust. So if she tells me that this is a good guy, you know what? As far as I'm concerned, this is a good guy. We went out, ate way too much, and just had a really great time getting to know each other. But when I got back to South Africa, I was like, this six-hour time difference does not work with my sleep schedule. So in the words of Beyonce, boy, bye. <laughs> What this interaction got me thinking about is how so many times in business, we want to be able to conduct a transaction with a party we may not know. So what ends up happening is that you select an intermediary to help you facilitate this transaction. And this intermediary could be a bank, a government, a law firm, but any party that will help you to feel secure enough to proceed with the transaction. And I've been learning about a system that allows you to create this type of trust while itself is a trustless system, and it is called the blockchain. So what is a blockchain? Well, it is a digitalized, decentralized ledger. It is forged by consensus and protected by cryptography. And what it does is that it records the movements of assets between person to person and from place to place. So it records all kinds of transactions. Who remembers growing up and having a diary that kind of looked like the one on the screen? Just something with a little padlock on it. And I always say, you know, kids these days will never know because they have iPhones with passwords. We just had a padlock, that was it. <laughs> so, for illustrative purposes, let's assume that this diary is similar to a blockchain system, in the sense that the padlock is the cryptography that keeps the information inside the diary secure. And when you open the diary, you find pages. So similarly, a blockchain has various blocks. And in order for a transaction to be recorded on a block, it has to comply with the consensus mechanism or consensus algorithm of that particular blockchain. And what a consensus algorithm is, is basically the rules of engagement that the parties of that blockchain have elected to use in order for them to verify transactions and to record them. But why does this matter? Why is it important? At the moment, a lot of companies or just our systems are very centralized, which means that they are subject to things like corruption, bribery, fraud, documents going missing, documents being leaked. And this is because we are trusting a single source to secure that information. And we, the people that then trust that centralized body, are being left very vulnerable. However, a decentralized system is kind of like a wedding, where there are multiple people that may not know each other, but they, are, they agree that they are here to verify the transaction that is occurring right now. And the decentralized system basically shows that you can have independent parties that, although don't know each other, have a vested interest in the transaction that's occurring, which makes it then difficult to bribe someone, or 400 people, to say either this event didn't take place or to tamper with the events that have already occurred. So a decentralized system increases or promotes transparency, which in turn helps us to be able to trust. So where is the blockchain being used at the moment? It has found a lot of popularity in the financial services space. And I told myself when I was preparing for this presentation that I don't want to talk about or use the B word. But let's just address the elephant in the room. Is Bitcoin blockchain? Well, the answer to that is Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies are a product of blockchain technologies. And there's so much more that they can provide, which is what I'm excited to share with you today. So, Apart from financial services space, it's also being used in identity verification, healthcare record storage, and supply chain to ensure something called provenance, which means being able to track the source of origin of a product. 
I'm not sure who remembers, or I'm sure we all remember, a couple of months ago, we had a huge listeriosis outbreak in this country. And I was having a conversation with my Aunt Rebecca, where I was telling her, Aunt Rebecca, you need to stop eating pork. And I saw this is a verbatim <laughs> conversation that we had. And if you're able to see my aunt's responses, you can tell from her responses that she is not ready to put the pork fork down. <laughs> if corporates had been using a blockchain system, what that would have allowed is for us as consumers to be able to trust the information that they were giving us because we know how a blockchain system works and we know that whatever has been loaded on, they cannot easily be changed. So we can rely on what they're telling us. And in turn, as consumers, we can make empowered decisions around what we want to purchase. But what we ended up with was literal panic in markets and supermarkets, an incredible amount of food being wasted and ultimately loss of life. So if we had used the blockchain system, what could have happened is that the retailers would have been able to track the movement of the asset, which was the pig, from pig farm to your frying pan. And if we combine that with Internet of Things technologies, we would be able to know the condition of the asset because IoT or Internet of Things technologies uh, transmit or share data. So we would know things like the temperature of the of the, the place where the pigs are being kept, or the weight of the pig, which may have allowed us to be able to isolate uh, places where contamination could have occurred and only destroy what was necessary, as opposed to what we ended up with. At the moment, uh, what, at the moment in China, IBM and uh, Walmart, along with JD, and a local Chinese university are working on what is called the Blockchain Food Safety Alliance to ensure uh, and help improve food tracking and safety in China. And potentially, we might be able to have that happening here. But honestly, why should you care? Why should you care about what this blockchain is? Well, blockchain is kind of like what the internet was 20 to 25 years ago, in the sense that we don't know, or we didn't know what it could do, but today we cannot imagine living lives that are not connected. And when we look at what the internet has done specifically for this continent, we can see its impact in so many ways in helping people to access health care, access to education, facilitate uh, entrepreneurship, as well as allow people to get financially included in the economy. And I believe that the development of blockchain has similar, if not even better, um, benefits for us, especially as an African continent. Because unlike our counterparts in the developed world, a number of our systems are relatively new when compared to theirs, which means that we're in a good position to be able to adopt and create solutions that work for us and our types of challenges. One of the challenge, or most of the challenges that we face on this continent can really be improved by radical transparency. That will help us solve at least half of our problems. Because when we are transparent, then we can begin to trust our leaders, trust one another, and have the international community trusting us. And then we can really begin to see the narrative of Africa is on the rise, actually coming to fruition. But without transparency, this continent will not rise. So at the moment, in Ghana, there's a company called Bitland that is using blockchain technology to support their land registry system. And by doing that, it will allow smallholder farmers to have collateral, to be able to prove that they own land, to access loans at banks and use that money to do whatever they want. In addition, De Beers, the mining company, is using blockchain technology to track the movement of its diamonds from the mine to the jeweler. And what this does is it helps them make sure that their diamonds are authentic, natural, and conflict-free. And this helps to reduce instances of illegal diamond trade, as well as to make sure that children are not involved in illicit mining activities. But at a personal level, how can you get involved in blockchain technology? Well, if you are, I will take you, there's a number of options, but I'll just take you through a few options that exist. 
If you are interested in blockchain engineering, that is actually a great, it's a great time to be in that space because the demand for blockchain engineers has risen by 400% in the last year, with companies like IBM, Facebook, and Amazon desperately looking to hire blockchain engineers, and they pay them very well. As an attorney myself, my interest is in around how do we regulate the space to ensure that people will be safe in their transactions, as well as so that law can be a catalyst in innovation. Or you can look at becoming a blockchain architect, where you design business use cases for blockchain technology. But if you are interested or you participate in the cryptocurrency trading, all I can say to you is good luck. So am I saying that blockchain technology is going to solve all our problems and we get to ride off into the African sunset without a worry or care? No. But, I mean, look at an app like Tinder. 50 million people log on there every month, hoping to find the love of their life and uh, trusting that, you know, romance might happen for them this time. It's not perfect, but people try. In that same way, I'm asking us to start thinking about how can or how will blockchain technology affect the places that we currently work? How will blockchain blockchain technology affect the communities that we come from or belong to? And most importantly, what is the chance that we can take on this type of technology and how can we start to get involved? My closing thought is one that I really enjoy from someone called Jim Lovell. And he says that in life there are three types of people. People that make things happen, people that watch what happened, and people that wonder what happened. When it comes to the blockchain, who are you going to be?